Game the System, the basics of how and why to gamify your training programs. So I'll be uh, your uh, leader, the guy who's talking today, uh, Jonathan Peters is my name, and I'm the Chief Motivation Officer at Sententia. So you say, who the heck is this guy? So anyway, uh, Monica Cornetti uh, is uh, the, the leader over here at Gamification. She's the main guru. She is. Uh, she will be coming to Chattanooga in on April 11. She wishes she could be uh, with you today, but she is at South by Southwest. She's leading uh, or is on a panel of gamification experts uh, at uh, the interactive portion of South by Southwest today. A little background, I am an international speaker, author, and my area is motivation and persuasion. So when we, but let's get into gamification. So when we look at gamification, it definitely is a buzzword for today. And as your workforce continues to get younger and our experience with information keeps changing, that's why I'm excited that you'll be adding gamification to your talent uh, development and employee engagement mix. And if you're in uh, talent development, human resources, employee engagement uh, type fields, uh, haven't you heard that gamification is in high demand and will continue to be for the next seven to 10 years? And isn't it also true uh, if you do a quick job search uh, for trainers, instructional designers, e-learning developers, and so on, you'll see gamification uh, on, uh, on the list of preferred, if not required, skill sets. So last week, in anticipation for this web, uh, webinar, I did a quick little search out there on a few uh, sites, just a uh, quick grab, and you can see up there in LinkedIn, there's 236 uh, results uh, specifically for gamification. Uh, Glassdoor had 833 jobs simply hired and so on. So you can see that it's certainly become, uh, in, in at least it, certainly in the time that I've been involved with uh, gamification, seen it uh, become much more prominent in uh, in requirements for jobs. So. What we're going to do is I want this to be about you today. OK, so for the next uh, 50 minutes or so, I want to be about you. OK, so as we get started, let me know your level of, um, of understanding, of experience with gamification. For the next, uh, like I said, I want this to be about you. So in the, uh, and, and thanks for already being involved in the uh, chat bar there. That helps out. Uh, let me know your level of knowledge and experience with gamification. So type in there a, uh, a five would be the guru status. Uh, four uh, means that we're, uh, you're involved in gamification of some kind. Three, kind of average. You actually spent some time implementing gamification. Two would be someone who, if you've done some uh, learning about gamification, understanding principles, and one would be, hey, you just heard this term, thought this was uh, an interesting interesting webinar to get on to. So just a quick one to five, so I get a feel for uh, what we're, who, who's, in the, who's in the group today. And while we're t uh, talking about the chat box, uh, as you have questions, uh, if they pop up during the, the webinar, uh, put, go ahead and put them in the chat box. If you've ever run webinars, you know it's tough to keep track of everything that comes in. But uh, I'll, uh, we'll certainly keep track of them and, and hopefully answer them. Towards the end of the program, I built in a, a little bit of time. We'll see how the, the, the webinar goes. And uh, hopefully we can get to them. If I don't get to them here, we'll certainly reach out. We'll certainly reach out and uh, get everything answered. Okay, looks like we got some numbers coming in. And let's, here's the thing, folks, because we're going to gamify this a little bit today. Okay, uh, but do stay with us till the end, uh, because here's what we're going to be doing. You're going to be collecting badges throughout this webinar. And you'll have the opportunity to win two free hours of consult uh, gamification consultation with uh, Monica Cornetti. Like I said, she uh, is the guru recognized uh, internationally. 
for instance, uh, in Barcelona, Spain, a few months ago, she was among the top three, was nominated as the gamification guru. Uh, she will be leading the uh, gamification certification at uh, the Chattanooga ATD chapter on April 11, which is a great opportunity when you consider her travel schedule. So here's the thing, folks. Uh, you'll be collecting uh, badges for these two hours of consultation, but you could lose that option if you do not earn at least four badges during our time together here today. So here's how it's going to work. On a piece of paper in front of you, give yourself a badge if you put a number in the chat box when we were uh, when I asked you to there. So if you put in your experience and knowledge level number, uh, go ahead and give yourself a badge. What you're going to do is on a piece of paper, write down a Gamification Explorer badge. Or if you're really artistic, you could draw that nice little badge. Okay, so uh, like I said, you'll need at least four of those uh, during this program to qualify. Okay, so let's uh, get into uh, gamification. Have you seen that uh, this is the new normal? Okay? These are what we call the gamers, the G generation. G generation is over uh, 56 million strong at this point. Uh, it is a combination of uh, the Gen Xers, folks born between uh, 1965 and 81. Uh, we do have, uh, of course, the millennials, folks born after 1982. And now we're starting to see uh, what's, what so far has been labeled as the Gen Zens, uh, folk, uh, young people who are born after 2001. And what becomes important here is the G generation is moving up in the business ranks. Uh, I'm here in Austin, Texas, like I mentioned, we have South by Southwest going on and you see uh, it's very, very uh, young. The, the G generation is moving up. They are becoming managers, partners. Uh, they'll eventually become CEOs. And chances are you manage employees from this generation. And in all likelihood, uh, before you leave your career, you will be managed by them, <laughs> all right? So uh, the G generation will continue to change how business is done because of who they are, how they grew up, how they see the world, and uh, how they go after what they want. All right, so, but let's start with a, a good definition because it probably have most of the people in who are going to be with us today. Uh, gamification is motivational uh, design uh, and uh, the use of game elements and game mechanics in a non-game context in order to uh, in order to engage users and solve problems. Okay? So forward-thinking organizations are beginning to understand how the power of gamification can increase engagement. And here's the important one, as well as the bottom line. So a few examples that are out there. Uh, you've probably seen this one. McDonald's throws in the Monopoly. I think it's in October. And, and you know how this works. It's you go to a store and you get a, a coupon or something. And you, could, you have a chance to win. And you're really excited because you could win a brand new car. But probably what happens is you get that little scratch off, you scratch it off, and guess what you did win? Oh, you won some fries, maybe a drink. But it kept you coming. And maybe you didn't even want fries or a drink, but it got you engaged. Or here's one. Uh, your your good old frequent flyer miles uh, traveled around. What what they're able to do with frequent flyer miles is to get us engaged in a way that we might not might not normally happen. So, for instance, uh, at the end of the year, I with American Airlines, I was uh, one leg. I was going to be one leg short of, uh, of re uh, maintaining my platinum status with them. And so I was out seeing a client in, in um, San Francisco and I was needing to go from San Francisco to Las Vegas. Well, there's some nice fly, uh, direct flights, uh, but nope, not for me. I, uh, I, went, I flew from San Francisco to Phoenix to uh, Las Vegas to make sure I got that extra leg in. So the point is this folks, gamification, 
okay, often will engage us to do, in this case, behaviors that we don't even want to do. I don't want to sit on an airplane for an extra two hours. I want to get to where I'm going, but to make sure I reach that status on their leaderboard will go the extra mile. Or here's one for you. Have you ever noticed that no matter how many how hard you work at your LinkedIn profile, it's never complete. <laughs> You're always, they always want one more piece of uh, information from you. And so it's the same I idea. So gamification is involved in a lot of, of what, how we interact with companies and brands today. So I want you to think about it. What badges, levels, uh, re reward programs uh, that you've earned uh, out there? So via social games. So in the chat box, list some of the uh, gamified or frequent flyer programs or reward programs uh, that, that you've been involved in okay, that, that gets you there. So just list out some examples, Let's share some examples in the chat box. And while we do this, think about why was that important to you? Yeah, hotel points, of course, then you get extra rooms. Yeah. See, we get rental car points. Yeah, good old. Uh, yeah, and again, we'll go out of our way. I know we got, have one coming up here with uh, Enterprise. I mean, not Enterprise, with National Rental Cars, and it got me going. <laughs> it gets me going there. Yeah, there's Enterprise, uh, Gas Rewards, Marriott. Have you, those folks who travel, you're either a Marriott person or a Hilton person. <laughs> yeah. Good, the grocery store. Fuel points, good, good. <laughs> good. So, all right. So if you wrote something in, we'll give you a little bit more time. Guess what? You get another badge, I think. Where's my example? Let's go slide. <laughs> all right, there we go. You get the creative contributor badge. Okay, so give yourself a nice little badge there with a circle. You can put a circle with a light bulb in it. So what about your organization? Can you use gamification internally to motivate employees? Okay, so what we just looked at were some outward facing uh, examples, but now let's think of internally. Uh, motivate your employees. Could you do it to ramp up your onboarding, uh, improve either e-learning or instruction, uh, instructor led learning programs? So here at Sententia, we have a, a five-step uh, trademarked and proven system that uh, you'll see an example of here in a little bit. And it's all wrapped around the acronym GAMES, GAMES. So GAMES stands for Goals, Adventure, Method, Engagement, and then Sync It Up. OK, a lot of times what folks do, or certainly organizations do, is they when especially when they're looking at gamification is they jump in too early. OK, so we want to make sure before we start that we have goals, we want to make sure that it involves an adventure of some kind, we want to have some sort of methods. What are our training methods or learning methods? Uh, more importantly, though, engagement is when it actually, gamification actually happens. So it becomes applied late in the system. So for those of you uh, see, going to go after uh, certification, you'll have a copy of this um, treasure map and we will be, uh, be going through this during the certification in, in much more detail. But it starts down there at the bottom left-hand uh, corner, bottom left-hand corner where you can see the ship and the orange. And you know, first of all, identify why you're gamifying uh, this project in the first place. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Gamification is a powerful tool, but it's still only a tool. But notice the second one there. Who will be playing your game? And this is uh, very, very important uh, before we get start, started in our, in our design process, is to know what is going to motivate uh, our team. Who's going to be playing? Uh, do you know your players? <laughs> uh, do you really know the people going through the training programs? Okay. So when we're when we're looking at uh, oops, let me get some notes here. So this becomes very very important when it, when we're talking about uh, motivating. So we'll talk about this here in a little bit more. But I want you to think about right now uh, how do you know what motivates your players 
and do you really know how to engage with them? So in the chat bar, uh, share with the folks here uh, how you get to know your participants, okay? When it comes to design, when it comes to training, uh, to talent development, uh, do you use assessments, for instance? Do you use surveys, questionnaires? Uh, and by the way, because we are going to a badge here, maybe you're just so busy. Uh, you might be like me sometimes. You just can't keep up with everything on your plate <laughs> uh, that you're not really sure what motivates your learners. Uh, you can share that with us as well. Just put overwhelm or something if, if we're not even uh, getting to that point. Okay, so what are some methods that, that uh, you're using? Good, starting by asking questions. I uh, see some assessments, questionnaires. Not sure what Molly's good. Thanks for being honest. <laughs> good, questionnaire assessments. Sit in their seats, great, <laughs> okay, certainly. Great, Steve. Yeah, good. But get some longevity there. Great, great. Good. So as long as we're working at it, let's grab another badge. Give yourself the player-centric design badge, okay? Because we want to be player-centric design. Because here's the thing, folks. Uh, I'm sorry. There you go. Here's the thing. Gamification, uh, according to Gabe Zimmerman, always says gamification is 75% psychological and only 25% uh, technology. And too often, because it's a buzzword, because of uh, shiny objects and so on, too often we focus on the technology, but it's really about the psychology is where we start. It's important that we understand who will be playing our game and what will motivate them. So at Sententia, uh, we use what I call the 16 whys, which are 16 core uh, needs. But we look at the 16 whys, and then we say, what makes, well, let me put it this way. What makes us different, you, me, uh, you to, to your players and to the folks you're working with, what makes you different is how much of each of these 16 core needs we desire. OK, so, for instance, we all have the 16. Some of us have more. Some of us have less of, of them. So, for instance, let's say status. OK, so some of us are highly motivated by status, but other people are low motivated by status or achievement. Uh, sometimes some of us will be more motivated by achievement than, say, self-expression or competition will be more important to us than, say, altruism. So these 16 whys, like I said, are universal, cross-generation, uh, cross generations, demographics, cultures, genders, and so on. So uh, we'll, uh, you may be hitting some of these human desires with your practices that you're already doing, but because you really haven't focused on your players, you might not be effectively motivating them. Okay, so it's important, like I said, that we first understand who uh, will be involved. Uh, who will be playing the game and then work towards them. All right, so so we got the third one. We're not going to go all the way through here, but it's good to get started, uh, especially at the very, very beginning. And so the third uh, step in, in this whole process is the define measurable business objectives. So when we get started on the project, we need to know what our overall objectives are before we, we actually begin design. Like I said, a lot of times what happens is folks and organizations, they grab a tool before they figure out where they're going. Uh, the Gartner Research Group uh, predicted that by the end of 2015, and I haven't seen if uh, how this has worked out and if we have data of whether this is true or not, was true or not, but they predicted that 80% of gamification business applications uh, will have failed uh, to meet their business ob objectives. So when we look at this in the workplace, you might, uh, we could probably extrapolate that where there would be similar results. You gamified a program, 80% fail. So we need to start our gamification design process with objectives. And you'd be surprised uh, how often trainers and designers can't express the objectives of the program uh, they're designing. So the next, when we move into the next area here, you see where the, the yellow area is, uh, it says frame your quest 
with a spell binding story. This is where we want to add adventure, add adventure to the process. Because storytelling, uh, in storytelling, the interaction is personal, engaging, and immediate. Uh, a lot of discussion going on at uh, South by Southwest right now about the power of story uh, as far as uh, creating uh, meaning, moving people to uh, in training and so on. So storytelling allows us to capture the attention of our audience. Uh, it enhances an understanding of the information and the learning experience by providing a social context for the learning. Okay, so I put in a few examples here that uh, we've used here at, or we've developed here at Sententia. Uh, the first one is uh, Snow White uh, and the Payroll uh, Administration. And this was a company that came to, um, came to us uh, several years ago. And payroll law was the thing. They just, uh, the company just acquired a payroll system. And uh, so what they wanted to do was to educate current clients and agents on the new services they were offering. Uh, they wanted to demonstrate the complexity of payroll administration because maybe then you would need them to, uh, you would need their services. So I don't know if you've gone, uh, spent much time with payroll law, but it's uh, not that interesting and not that exciting. So we developed was um, this idea with uh, Snow White. Now, Snow White is uh, open source. Uh, by, by the way, the seven dwarves aren't, so we couldn't have called them seven dwarves. But uh, there was Grumpy Gus and uh, in different characters inside of here. So. Uh, so, for instance, uh, Grumpy Gus was grumpy uh, because uh, he had been divorced three times uh, and his uh, wages are garnished. So, of course, he's upset. So by talking about uh, Grumpy Gus, uh, folks, the participants could learn about wage garnishment. Or there was uh, Dopey Dan. Uh, he was the boss's son who was misclassified. Oh, and the woodsman. I just saw a preview. I guess they're coming out with a new thing on the new movie on the woodsman. Um, this is where uh, the participants talked about uh, 1099 employees, okay? Because now is the woodsman really 1099? Because uh, you know she's uh, the evil king, queen's very specific on how to rip the heart out and how to kill Snow White. Because you know it's a children's story, so we got to get really graphic here. Uh, does he do similar services for other evil uh, queens and so on? So uh, using the story of Snow White to wrap around what would be generally a pretty boring uh, training, or could be potentially boring, but very important, very technical, and people need to uh, remember it. Uh, one that I developed, uh, pretty proud of this one. Uh, this ain't your grandma's grammar. I don't know if grammar was, uh, English was your favorite subject in uh, school, but again, it can be rather uh, dry or boring. And the concept here, the story or the adventure, if you will, is grandma loves grammar. And she uh, she also bakes cookies. So the idea is that uh, throughout the day we collect cookies, grandma points, uh, throughout the day. But grammar has changed since uh, grandma was around. And so wherever it's changed, then we could get boss points. Now the problem is when you get boss points, you offend grandma and you lose some cookies, but you also get a dollar an hour raise, all right? So wrapping around this uh, story with uh, gram grandma, it engages in what could potentially be a rather uh, dry and boring process, not only engage, but also help folks to remember. Uh, for a, a, a fortune, let's see, probably better than 100, maybe 500 company. We did this one was a diversity training for their leaders, uh, wrapped it around the whole concept of uh, draft, uh, draft day. The, this is the movie had just come out about the time we were working with them. Uh, here's one to, uh, for a uh, university in South Africa. Uh, now, obviously, we couldn't use the exact uh, creatures here, but the folks who would be going through this, uh, this was an onboarding program for new, uh, what, I can't remember what they called them, lecturers or instructors, but you know, new uh, teachers, if you will, at the university and using a similar process uh, as the movie 
uh, as you can see there. So we didn't actually <laughs> rip off the movie directly because there would be some issues there. But you're starting to get an idea of, of how we can lay uh, some aspects of adventure over our, our training. Oh, I think I have another one. Yeah, here's one. Uh, this one's uh, fun. This was a sales training. In this case, the organization already had uh, the uh, acronym STORM. And so we were able to take uh, take their acronym and then use Storm Chasers as part of their sales training. And so, it, so we could take this, uh, the spirit behind our proven process, apply it to a client-centric sales strategy. Okay, so the point here is this. Storytelling promotes emotional engagement. Okay? This type of engagement creates uh, positive outcomes in the workplace because employees have made strong ties, get this, to their bosses, coworkers, and company values. Okay, so it's very, very important to, uh, to, to consider the story, the adventure, the journey when it comes to creating a program. All right, so so we have, what do we have? We have goals, uh, we have adventure. Now we're going to go on to methods. Okay, methods is the, the middle of the program here. In any organization, uh, there are different things that need to be learned to, uh, to properly perform a job. Okay, so whether it's regulatory or safety or it's just how it needs to to happen. So for instance, a learner needs to understand the basic principles before he or she can apply them to solve a particular problem. So the flow of knowledge acquisition from one level to another is important for the overall learning process. So this is what we look at when we uh, examine the methods uh, section in, in our design. Okay, so, so for instance, what you'll notice here is we are using a map. So let me look at this one. <clears throat> okay, so we're using a map that leads people through the design process. So with the so the four C's, we could uh, connect. Uh, we have the concept. We have a can do, and we can then celebrate. Okay, so this map is leading people through. So when we look at methods of learning. Now, I want to demonstrate this to you. So this would be a good time to, uh, to pause the angry birds. It's time to come back to the screen because we're going to have an activity here. Um, in just a few seconds, what I'm going to do is put up a slide here. You'll have uh, 60 seconds. Better get my stopwatch ready here. You'll have 60 seconds. And I want you to look at the numbers on the screen and count them in numerical order. So what you'll do is you'll look around and you'll find number one. And then you'll look and you'll find number two, number three, number four, and so on. Okay, so like I said, when you see the screen, it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, so are you ready? Okay, look at the screen. Here we go. You got 60 seconds. Write down the numbers. And stop. Okay, how far did you get? Note, note how far you got. Okay, so good. Keep them coming in. All right, so here's what we're going to do, folks. How about if I made this a little easier for you? <laughs> Would this work a little bit? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add um, a, des a design feature here to make it a little easier for you. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. <clears throat> They're two sixteens. Okay, I gotta check that out. That'll be interesting. Yep, there they are. See, <laughs> bonus points. Uh, who, who said that? Uh, I lost your thing. Oh, there we are. Hey, <clears throat> Sharon. 
Shannon, Shannon gets bonus points. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a little uh, help here. Okay, so same thing. We're going to start. Let me stop and get the get the stopwatch ready for you. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hold on. There we go. Do the same thing. And stop. Let's see how far we got that time. <laughs> All right. 49, holy cow. 38, good, good. So we're doing a little bit better. Can we agree? How far did we get? Good, good. Yeah. So see, by just adding these lines, it becomes a little bit easier. Now I'm going to obsess on those double 16s there <laughs> to go fix the... Fix the graphic. Thanks so much. 44, good. Got 48. How if I? Good, good. See, so by adding lines as a designer, you can help the participants move towards mastery. Okay. So in this case, you we now have a tool that makes it easier for you to learn. You could do the same thing uh, for your folks. Okay. So just by adding tools. Okay. If you uh, did this activity. If you posted up your numbers, guess what? We have time. We have a chance for another badge. And this one's moving the mastery badge, and it's a good little monkey in a circle there. All right, <laughs> moving to mastery. Okay. Now in the uh, third stage, one, two, three, four, actually the next stage here is where we get into the game mechanics. Now. This is important. I want to stress this. Notice how far we are into the process before we actually get down to the, the actual mechanics of gamification. Uh, it's important to lay a good foundation when we're building our program, when we're training. Once we have everything figured out, then we can uh, start to uh, put the actual mechanics into place. So uh, to be clear here, there are over we have listed over 300 game mechanics, okay? So in the certification, uh, pro when we have a certification there in uh, April 11, uh, you'll have a resource for the list of all these uh, 300 of them, okay? Now, what's important here though, I want you to remember this phrase, less is more, okay? <laughs> less is more. So repeat that to yourself, say it aloud if you can without disturbing someone in the office, Less is more. Yes, there, like I said, we have over 300, uh, listed 300 different game mechanics, uh, but we don't want all 300 of them, okay? So in a nutshell, at this level, we want to focus on desired behaviors, motivators, and the supporters of those motivators, okay? We want to align the mechanics with the motivators. So start by looking at uh, what you what is a desired behavior, okay? Let's say you want people to click a like button, okay? Pretty simple. Next, we should consider what may motivate the user to actually click the button. So uh, of the 16 whys, what would actually get them to, to click on it? And then we look for something that supports that motivator, okay? A mechanic that some, uh, supports that. So maybe it would be rewards. Uh, so we could do basic points, badges, achievements uh, in some form of economy. Uh, we'll say it was status. Uh, we could have a leaderboard. Uh, we could have certain badges, achievements uh, to show, uh, show off their status. Uh, again, at the engagement level, 
is where we add uh, game elements to our program. We didn't start with cool badges or some fancy heads up display. No, we set our objectives first, then we created the adventure, then we set our methods, and now we're adding the game elements, okay? So that becomes very, very important that we don't jump in too quickly. Right? So we've gone through uh, four of the stages. On the fifth one is when we're syncing it all up. Okay, and uh, so what we want to do is construct a cohes uh, cohesiveness that ties the whole project together. Again, we don't want to just be throwing game elements and create a, a whole hodgepodge here. It needs to be uh, consistent, it needs to uh, work together. So we want to sync it all up. So, uh, and then of course, test it and have some fun with it, all right? Now, like I said, I've gone through this relatively quickly in the time that we have here. Uh, this is just an overview of the five stage process that uh, you'll learn more about at the certification, gamification certification on April 11. But wanted to look at a few key uh, ideas and principles to begin with. Okay, so let's make this a little bit more practical. Maybe let's look at some basic gamification ideas that uh, you might implement in your organization. For example, let's say, uh, let's use your help desk uh, or a customer service area. Let's say your focus is on providing a sense of accomplishment. Okay? The three objectives, the three objectives that matter most are the number of support tickets, uh, support ticket resolution, number of quick resolutions, and pos uh, positive customer feedback. Okay, so these are the three objectives that you would be looking at. Every time an agent resolves a ticket, the resolution tally increased uh, increments by one, goes up by one. Quick rev resolutions, though, are variable metrics that will differ from help desk to help desk, okay, depending on uh, the, the type of questions that are coming to them. Some will get uh, completed more quickly. Research shows that a majority of customers leave favorable feedback when their problem is resolved within 15 minutes or less. Okay, so maybe you want to set a quick resolution metrics to be uh, those tickets resolved under 15 minutes for a tier one issue, 30 minutes for tier two, and so on. Or you could set times that are relative to the average resolution time for tickets and so on. Okay, And then a thumbs up indicates how many people left positive feedback. Okay, so this is a, a way of gamifying uh, the help desk. Another example we could think about is the team leaderboard. Okay. Most organizations have parallel help desk operations. For example, uh, take good old Zappos. Uh, they have multiple help desk teams who are all working on uh, service tickets across the organization. Each team tracks their own uh, matrices and they make, their, um, they make these public because they enjoy the healthy competition it creates. So you can have a team leaderboard that allows teams to benchmark their performance against their peers. Okay, so they can, we can have a, a competition internally within the organization. Or we could have a sense of accomplishment. So, and we could do this at the very, very beginning, say at the onboarding, uh, we could, so just imagine turning the training process into a timed game. Okay, so they're, they're coming, they have to learn something that's now a timed game. Uh, you could use t different terminology. So you could have challenges instead of quizzes. Uh, you could add a timer to each challenge, uh, letting them know they only have so much time to complete it and they need to prove their mastery of the material at various stages. Because everything is tracked in the system, the manager can go back, and identify issues and errors and review them uh, with the new employee. So it's, a, again, a, a way to gamify a process instead of just having them sit through uh, just another boring lecture, <laughs> all right? So the point here is you cannot simply add gaming elements to a system and expect success. You have to take a closer look at the objectives and the players. That's where we started. Uh, who is the user what are, and what motivates them? And how does this align with the success of the company? 
Okay. So I want you to pause here and I want you to think about how you can apply uh, what you've learned so far to uh, real life experiences. Okay. I don't know uh, your organization, uh, what, what types of programs you're developing or something. So I want you to think about at this stage in the webinar, what are some, what is I want you to write down one thing on a sheet of paper in front of you. Just write down one thing or type it in uh, the computer if it's a, more convenient. One thing that uh, has struck you that you can and will be applying. Okay, so we're not, we're not sharing this publicly because this is for you and your organization. So make a commitment now. And if you did that, guess what? Another badge, talent development ace, <laughs> all right? That's the next badge. Okay, so we have a, a good little overview. Let's uh, get into some other uh, nuts and bolts here. All right, so fasten your seat belts because uh, we're gonna take it up a notch here. What you have is an overview so far of the five levels of gamification design uh, that we use here at uh, Sententia. And you have uh, some ideas of how you can be, again, applying this to your company. But I want to take a few minutes here to look at the realities of gamification. First of all, it can be costly. Okay? And that cost may be a considerable uh, barrier for some organizations. When most people think of gamification, they think of the, uh, the time commitment of development, testing, implementation, and then if technology is involved, of course, there's an expense to technology. However, gamification can be done at a reduced cost and within the same relative time frame as traditional uh, development of instruction. Additionally, it doesn't need to be focused on online platforms and mobile apps. Okay? Better yet, you can avoid the four costly mistakes that most people make when planning uh, their first gamification experience. Okay, so we're gonna give you the four costly mistakes here. First one is, we fail to say, ask the question, why are we playing? Instead of asking, how can we leverage gamification in our organization? Uh, we begin with clearly defined objectives and then ask is if gamification is a suitable avenue to achieve those objectives. See, many people confuse goals and objectives. A goal is a general guideline that explains what you want to achieve, okay, such as I want to increase our sales uh, in each division this year, thus increasing our overall percentage of market share. Okay, so that would be a goal. The objective, on the other hand, uh, typically defined uh, strategies and implementation steps to obtain the goal. Okay, so unlike goal, objectives are specific, measurable, and so on. They have a divine, defined completion date, and uh, they are more specific uh, and outline the who, what, where, when, why, how of reaching a goal. So we, we at the beginning of the project, we want to be crystal clear uh, when stating our objectives. So the second costly mistake is failing to identify who the game is for. Talked about this earlier. This is, we start right off the bat getting to know our players. Okay, uh, why do some people engage in the gamification while others disengage in frustration? Why do some elements appeal to some people but have no effect on others? Now, one of the issues here is uh, when we look at our own personal uh, personal motivation profile and we have trouble understanding the perspective of those who are different from us. Remember when I was saying how uh, what makes us different with the 16 whys, some of us uh, are high, we're high in some and low in the others. See, uh, that's based on the work of uh, Dr. Stephen Reese uh, with the Reese Motivational Profile. And what, one of the things Dr. Reese talks about, he calls it self-hugging, self-hugging. He says, not only do we believe everybody should be like us, but that they are like us. Okay. So in gamification design, it is important to realize that you as a developer have different uh, motivations for playing than the people and <laughs> the most people that you're encountering. Uh, you chose your job. You chose uh, what you do. The people that you're training probably didn't choose your job unless you're doing a, a train the trainer. So don't assume that players want things the way uh, that you do. 
Okay. Talk with potential players. Find out what makes them tick. Okay, so that's the second one. The third costly mistake is attempting to fix a broken product or service with gamification. A common misuse of gamification is attempting to fix something. So simply giving this broken down car a new paint job won't make it run. It doesn't matter how good it looks, the engine still won't work. The same is true with your gamification design. If done correctly, uh, it's colorful and fun and inviting, uh, it will draw users. Uh, but when they find out that your product uh, quality doesn't match your marketing language or that your customer service department should uh, really be called customer torture department, uh, they'll wonder why you bothered gamification in the first uh, gamifying in the first place. Okay? So you have to solve uh, solve the problem of a bad product or service before you can truly leverage gamification. And the fourth one, and again, we alluded to this earlier, is thinking that gamification is just points, badges, and leaderboards. That's, that's all gamification is about. Remember, there are over 300 game mechanics. Okay? Perhaps some of those will work better for your program. Uh, so again, what we're going to be doing, uh, one of the activities you'll be doing at the certification on uh, April 11 at Chattanooga is you'll learn to match game mechanics with motivators. Okay? And so you'll actually have that opportunity. So it's important to identify the motivators first and then discover what, uh, what mechanics will actually work towards those. So nothing necessarily wrong with points, badges, and leaderboards, but there's so many other options available to us. So, so far what you have is you have a clear understanding of what gamification can achieve, okay, what the pot potentials are. And we, uh, in, I introduced you to uh, five essential steps to developing a successful gamification program. Uh, again, if you can remember the acronym GAMES, games. so when you're creating a program, start with the goals, um, uh, creating an adventure, what are uh, the methods, uh, then you want to engage them and, and then sync it all up. Uh, you, uh, you have a practical method for approaching gamification in your organization, covered the four major mistakes of, of gamification. So we have a good, in just a relatively short period of time, uh, we, we have a good basis for everything. So if you're obviously serious about gamification and present, uh, presenting engaging training programs. And I want to acknowledge you for uh, staying with me on the call uh, to this point. Uh, most people in your field really don't uh, do not uh, do what you've done here today, and, and that's taking the time to, uh, to to look at different aspects and how you can improve. So now that you have a theoretical grasp of gamification, you might want to take this knowledge uh, to the application level to actually apply gamification to a training program. This might be the right time to get certified in gamification. Hey, so because you're online now, uh, watching this webinar, some of you are on the phone uh, listening to me speak, and you have a commitment and determination to this, uh, that's why level one certification is perfect for you. Okay? It's specifically for people who want to deliver engaging training that gets results. You have the opportunity on April 11, April 11, to go through the five stages of gamification design with Monica Cornetti. Six recertification credits, okay? but also a level one certification in gamification. You'll also uh, experience what it's like to go through a fully gamified training. Uh, you'll get tons of tools and insights you can use immediately in your organization. And most importantly, you will have fun. <laughs> All right, I've gone through several of these myself, and they are fun. I want to stress that this is the only gamification certification for talent development that is recognized by HRCI, uh, SHRM, ATD, and so on. Certified gamification professional uh, credentials serve as a visible acknowledgement of your demonstration uh, and mastery of core gamification principles. What we want to do when we're looking at your program is to realize that this is on uh, April 11, and I have a, a certain memory tool for you. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. What I want you to do is register by uh, March 22, March 22. 
And what you'll do is if you go to uh, astdchat.org, so I want you to count up your badges from this net webinar and look down and count them now. So count up all your badges. And do you have at least four? Okay, great. So then you are eligible to win uh, two hours of consultation with Monica, as long as, like I said, we register by March 22. And that's, a, I just did that as a memory tool. So March 22 versus April 11. Folks, um, I believe I'll also be uh, with you in Chattanooga. I will not uh, be leading out. I'll be in the background. Monica does all the, the good stuff, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's, been, it's been years since I've been in Chattanooga and uh, looking forward to getting back there. All right, so head on over to uh, astdchattanooga.org, and uh, let's get registered for the event, and we'll see you in April. Thanks a lot, folks.